the summer of 2003, Creative Partnerships London East initiated a programme of action research to explore practical ways for schools and their partners to integrate preferred learning styles and creativity into their teaching and learning offer. In the early stages of the project, we were invited to take a group of teachers and head teachers from four of the schools we were working with to the United States of America. I want to look at creative change and the problems that occurs and how you do it, because you create chaos and then you've got to deal with that. I want to find a school that does it well in America. I haven't found one. I'd like to see that. I'm interested in knowing how the whole US system works full stop, looking at the process of school-wide change and um, how that's managed and how much autonomy schools have in that. I'm looking to find um, answers to the question, basically, of you know, how do you know that preferred learning styles and being aware of that actually is having an effect on the way that they're learning and it's not some other things that are actually um, creating that um, improvement. I really want to go and steal as many ideas as I can to bring back to my classroom and to try out with, with the other members of staff here. So my, my big question really is, is what, what are you doing and how is it different to what I'm doing? <laughs> We visited schools in New York State and Oklahoma City and shared our thinking with a whole range of practitioners. A-plus is a programme exploring school change and reform through arts infusion and continuing professional development for teachers. The programme was established in North Carolina in the early 1990s. Oklahoma A-plus schools was launched in 2002, working across Oklahoma State and City building practical approaches to understanding and application of Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. A Plus is really a network that provides ongoing professional development and it focuses on using instruction in the arts and experiential learning. Um, it's, it's about collaborating in schools to make sure that every child in every school gets the best possible benefit from the education there. The A Plus Schools takes a creative approach to whole school reform. Although it isn't about strictly the arts, the arts are a strong component of what makes a good school. It's basically my contention that we know what makes a good school. We know the kinds of schools that we want our own children to go to. We know the kinds of experiences that those schools should provide. A school like that for my child is rich in the arts. It has teachers who talk to each other. It has parents involved. It offers opportunities for people to learn in the ways that are most productive for them. So using multiple intelligences using the whole infrastructure of the school to support that whole child. And in order to do that, it has to happen through the creative process. I've really been impressed by the way that students in the schools that we have been into have been focused on their learning. I'm looking now to try and integrate or to build up some kind of guitar work because it seems to me to be a, a very good way of getting all students to participate in music. That's great. I've really enjoyed that. Seriously, <laughs> that's blown me away. <laughs> Superb. Professor Rita Dunn from St. John's University, New York, pioneered research in the mid-1980s in brain-based learning and developed approaches and a methodology to assess and understand learning styles. Her work and training schemes have influenced a whole range of individuals and institutions across the USA. We have the Done and Done profile, which we do use, and currently tested all 51 administrators in the district to give them a clearer picture of our differences. And by observation, by looking at youngsters, by asking them the right questions, asking them how they're more comfortable, by giving them freedom. Where do you want to work? 
who do you want to work with? Do you want to work alone? Would you prefer to write something, hear something, do something to show me that you learn, that you know something? Okay, so we have people who want to work alone over here, all right? People who want to work in groups and want to do a writing exercise. Okay, people who want to illustrate and draw pictures in groups. I'm assuming that's the rest of you. If you want to that's listen to music, said. draw yourself closest to the music. If you don't want to hear the music, go close. Uh, right. right. I like to like work by myself because it's a lot harder um, telling people how I feel about like drawing the things that are in my mind. We really start by assessing the teachers. And we talk about their style and we teach them about themselves. And our expectation is that once they understand themselves and the differences among the staff, as Sharon and I have the same philosophy but deliver it in a very different way, uh, we expect them to translate this to the students. I like learning with my eyes. I need to work in a group. If I'm uh, like sitting on a desk where there's a table and there's like a chair, then that's good because I can't like sit on a, just a couch because it makes me sloppy writing and stuff. We look at various ways that students learn, their learning styles, students' learning preferences, their multiple intelligence. This is based on brain-based research. We look at what are the best practices in education and how can we enforce and bring those best practices into all of our classrooms. They're investigating solids, liquids, and gases. So with the six stations, they're allowed to choose um, where they want to start. Now they'll go from the concrete stuff, the touchy-feely stuff, over to the, the reading portions, and they'll have a better understanding of the reading sessions when they get there. I've always been a very hands-on station kind of person, uh, but the learning styles has really put a whole new dimension to that as well. We don't live in a world any longer that depends upon solely getting the right answer. We live in a world that depends upon getting the best answer. And to get the best answer, you think creatively. And creative thought has to be nurtured and built and deliberately delivered in instruction in schools. When you can bring science to life through music, when you can make language and drama connections, any time that you can use an art form to help children understand the significance of content, you've made a richer experience. You've made school more fun, more engaging. You've also deepened the understanding of the student through that experience. So the arts become a very powerful tool that is used to infuse value into content, first of all, and in ways that are so much more significant than simply drawing a picture about a story that you've read or singing the multiplication tables, but actually going deeper into an understanding so that children can evaluate, they can apply, they can synthesize their learning in ways that are not possible unless you use the arts. The arts are a curriculum in their own right, and so having uh, the benefit of the knowledge of the art form deepens everyone's understanding. There is color, there is line, there is shape and form, in every part of our lives. So to be able to understand those terms artistically and apply that to daily life is a very powerful tool.